Hi everyone. This mini lecture is on six tips to writing well about literature. I want to start out by saying that there are many types of essays and literary essays or writing about literature is just one kind. And even within it, there are several types. This video is intended to help support you with the writing that we are going to do in our class. Just a reminder that some of the suggestions given are ones that are good for all types of writing, while other tips are not. They're just specifically for literary essays. The way to see writing overall, as a reminder, is to determine the genre or type of writing you're doing, the purpose or why you're doing it, and the audience who is going to see your writing. I also wanted to just give you some overall steps to writing an essay, just some reminders as well. The first step is to decide on your topic based on the prompt. The second set step is to do your research by looking at the assigned text or text that you're given, the coursework that you've been doing that's preparing you to write, and if assigned, outside research from the library. You also need to spend some time developing your essay before you actually do the writing by doing some pre-writing strategies. And then finally, get started writing. It's okay that your first draft is not that great. It takes time to write. And so the suggestion is to write and then revise and then take some more time away and then come back and revise again have someone else or others read your work for clarity and to help you edit it. So without any further ado, let's get started with our six tips. The first tip is to carefully read the prompt. Determine what the essay is supposed to be about and please stick to it. This is not a free for all. The teacher wants to know that you've done the reading, that you've done the critical thinking and that you're able to write about it. And so that's really important. Some common literary topics are to write about character. And so if you're going to write about character, you want to consider their values, their goals, characteristics, their hidden agendas. Another topic is on themes. So something to think about, how is the theme evident? How does the plot, the character, the setting, the language illustrate a theme? And what is implied in the text, meaning what is written in the text that you don't see, but it's implied. So you look beneath the text to determine what is really meant. Another way to write is to use a, a theoretical lens. So a teacher might ask you to analyze the whole text or a part of it from a particular point of view, such as a historical or a Marxist or a feminist or a post-colonial and race theory, et cetera, those types of points of view. They might ask you to synthesize more than one work from a similar type of point of view. So you're reading it for a specific reason. The second tip is to plan well. So you wanna ask yourself, what is the main point for each of your paragraphs? You need to be able to find examples and a hard and fast rule for literary essays. Please do not give plot summary. If you write a plot summary as your essay, you won't pass it because all you're doing is you are showcasing that you might understand what was in the text, but you're not critically thinking about it. A good first thing to do is to make sure you understand it. So writing a plot summary to make sure you understand what has happened is good, but your essay needs to be based on the prompt and not plot summary. The third tip that I want to give you are some scholarly writing expectations. So I just gave you a hard and fast rule. I want to give you a few more. These are ones that you need to stick to in this type of writing to please write in the present tense. Even though the text was written in history, write as though it were written currently, that, that, that it just happened. And so go through your essay. If you've written in the past tense, change it all to the present tense. Please write in the third person. So even though you're doing the scholarly writing and it's your scholarly opinion about what's going on, 
the expectation is to write in the third person, not using I or me or those types of personal pronouns. When you introduce the author, please first do so with the first and last name and then just only the last name throughout. So if you're writing about, for example, Benjamin Franklin, you would introduce him as Benjamin Franklin, but then just use Franklin throughout. If when you're writing about the literature, use the character's names. So you can use their first names, their last names, Mr. or Mrs., however they're known best in that piece of writing. And then please cite your sources in text along the way. We need to know what page number your quotations come from very specifically. So do not wait until the end, do it along the way, or you won't be able to do it well. And I will be looking to see that you have found the quotations on those pages. The fourth tip, let's look at the introductory paragraph. So the basics of an introduction is that you need to make sure that you've covered everything from the prompt. You need to include the author or authors, the first and last name and you know to begin, and then the title or titles. Um, I want to point out the difference between uh, writing a short text title versus a long text title. Short texts are in quotation marks. Long texts are in, in italics. And then you need to write a thesis that answers the prompt. If you need some more support with your thesis, please go to the optional resources and I have some support on writing a good thesis there. Also to make it good, consider including a relevant quotation, an opening hook to catch the reader's attention, and or some relevant background information that the reader needs to know. Now let's talk about our fifth tip in which I'm suggesting that you use the PEEL approach, P-E-E-L approach for your body paragraphs. It doesn't mean that every sentence has to be in this exact order, but generally speaking, this is what you need to consider including when you are writing a body paragraph. So P is for make a point or claim. E means that you need to use evidence to back up your point or claim. And usually that is a quotation, a paraphrase or details from the literature. The next E means that you need to explain. You need to explain how the evidence supports your point. And then finally, make sure you link this point to the actual topic or the next point. Okay, so link it to your claim, to your thesis, and or make it link to the next point. Some support here for some language that you may want to look at, and this is a good place to pause the video and actually take a photo. This is some language support that you can use, language that you can use in your writing, and this helps to guide you in the types of things that you need to include. The sixth tip has to do with conclusions and it is given from the UNC uh, University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Synthesize your key points, don't summarize. So what that means is your brief summary of the paper's main points, but don't simply repeat them that the things that were in your paper. So while it is considered to be a brief sum, summary, it's not exactly summarizing all the points in your paper. The goal is to show your reader how the points you made and the support and examples you use fit together and support your thesis, pull it all together. Some final recommendations, start writing early. A lot of times students will procrastinate because they're scared. They don't know what they should be writing about. So just get started. Just start. And it doesn't matter if you get very far, but start early. That way you can do a little bit of work and then you can add to it a little bit more, etc. Please get help if you need it. The success center that we have and the librarians we have can help support you and they want to help. That's what they're there for. They want to see students and they want to help. So go in and ask. And if the first person can't help you, find someone else. And I have links to the support in your syllabus. 
Please also trade papers with a peer to get their feedback. Because this class, um, it does include some opportunities for peer review from time to time. Your specific class may not because we have a lot of reading to do, but that doesn't mean you can't ask someone else to take a look at your writing and ask for their feedback on how to improve it. And then also, if this is not enough for you, if you need a little bit more support, look at other suggestions, take a look at YouTube and for content from other .edu sources. Like I said, Chapel, UNC Chapel Hill has some good information. There's other good information as well, which I will include in our optional resources. Thank you so much. And I wish you luck in your writing and I cannot wait to read what you have to say.